So this is a picture of Roxy. She was her family dog. And my wife and kids, who are over the top dog people, pro dog, pro cat, loves animals, were begging me for years to get a dog. And so the thing you need to understand is I am not an animal person at all. So I was the one that was keeping the family from getting a dog. What a bad dad, right? And finally, after years of them begging me for a dog, I gave in. And so after two years with her, after six months of our family having hard conversations and a lot of back and forth, we decided to finally rehome her. Yeah. Now, I'm not gonna get into all the details as to why we believed it was best for her and for our family, but I will say the experience of finding her a, a new family like a really good home, a really good family, a really good fit. It was crazy how much it overlapped with the experiences that I have as a business owner and you may have as a business owner trying to find people. And at the same time, if you're in a career trying to get the next job, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a manager looking for the right team members, or you're on the other side of this and you're just looking for work in this kind of crazy economy that we're in, and finding jobs right now is incredibly hard. I think you gotta listen to this because it's crazy to me how the story of the lessons that I learned with my two-year-old Roddy trying to find her a new home basically mirrored what happens in the workplace. The mistakes that people make when they're looking to apply for a job, the mistakes that entrepreneurs make when they're trying to find and build the right team, and the just the ridiculous difference between being one of a million, like one of a million options for being hired and trying to get the job or one of a million options for people looking for work and really what you need to do to stand out from the pack. So the first thing that, that I found ridiculous is, is number one, showing up is not enough. If you are the only one for something, the only one with a job opening, the only one who's willing to apply for a job, the only one with a, with a rare dog, and the only one who wants that dog, then as long as you're breathing, you're a good fit, right? Like you pass the mirror test. You ever heard that as this old term, right? Like, I can fog up a mirror, you're hired. You're the only, you know, you're the only company in town. You don't have to work very hard to find staff, right? But, but that's hardly ever the case. You're never the only one. You're, you're never only one option. So first on our side, on the employer side, on the entrepreneur side, on the business owner side, as, as, as the person you know, who was trying to rehome this dog, I have this opportunity. So you know, if I'm running a business, I have this opportunity for a role. With, Ro with Roxy, again, let's look at that picture again. Gosh, she's cute, eh? You know, in this case, for me, it's my dog, but it could be anything. I could be trying to sell anything. I could have any opportunity. I could be trying to sell a home and be a realtor. I could, um, I could be trying to sell something on Kijiji. It doesn't really matter. I'm the one who's posting for the opportunity. So before I created the post, I got my shit together and I came out swinging, right? Like it doesn't matter if it's a buyer's market. It doesn't matter if it's a seller's market. It doesn't matter if there's a lot of people out of work or a lot of job opportunities. I wanted the best options in front of me and the most people to pick from. So I had to put in the time I had to put in the effort. I had to work to create this ad or this post that made me stand out. I had to create something that represented what I wanted. And for me with this situation, it was as transparent and honest and intentional as possible. I did the same thing when we were trying to sell our house. So we've been in this house now for six years, but we were getting ready to sell our first home, my wife and I, and we knew that the market was whatever, but we wanted the we wanted to make the most money. We wanted the most offers. We wanted to sell it the quickest way possible. And so when we decided in June that we were gonna sell our house, we started preparing for it. We started working on it. So June and July and August, we didn't put our house on the market till the end of September. And so I worked and I did everything to this place. I cleaned everything. And I brought my realtor in. We, you, you don't even know, I can't even list how much stuff we did. We brought the realtor in uh, maybe two weeks before we started to list it. And I walked them through the house and I said, oh, you don't have to worry about those baseboards. I'm going to repaint them. And he's like, okay, you don't really have to do that. 
And I said, no, no, I want to repaint them. They're a little scuffed. And, and this door here, it's got this, I'm going to repaint that door as well. And you don't have to worry about, um, you know, in the basement, um, you don't have to worry about the dirt behind the washing machine or the, the, the yeah, the washing machine in the basement. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the washer and dryer and I'm going to vacuum and, and repaint the basement walls. So everything's clean because I had this belief that this home represented me that that when people walk through from the curb appeal all the way through that if they went down to the basement and they looked up at our unfinished basement and it was clean and there were no spider webs and everything looked well painted and and empty like I had this belief that if the home felt right and if it looked clean then what else like like if, if it's immaculate then they're gonna feel like they're buying something brand new and so I came in swinging and I did the hard work with Roxy, it's the same thing basically. I had to speak about what we're trying to do and who we are and how I believe we can help and, and, and what kind of family we're looking for. We had to do the work to put a great post together to get people's attention, something that spoke to them and help them picture themselves owning, taking care of, living with our dog. And with my house, I did the same thing, right? From, from the curb all the way through to the backyard, every single step, I wanted to make sure that they could picture themselves living in this home. Now, if I was just willing to go with anyone, this seems crazy. It, like, it seems like a crazy amount of work. But I don't want just anyone. You don't want just anyone. You want the right person. You want the best people. And so just showing up isn't enough. And on the other side, this is crazy to me. The people who were responding to the opportunity, so that could be the job. In this case, in this example, it's Roxy, my dog. They want my dog. You may want the job or the bank loan or whatever. You might want the date. You have to stand out. You have to put the work in because just showing up and saying, hey, hey there, I can do this. Hey, here I am. Hey, I can take your dog off your hands. It's not enough. Really, like it's, it's crazy to me how stark the difference was between the people who would send me a note on, on Kijiji where I, I posted the, the ad and they would just say like, she's a beautiful dog. I'll take her off you. Can I come by Monday? And the people who gave me like, I don't know, a 900 word breakdown of their experience with dogs, of references, of photos of them with them, of their, you know, like what they want to do, where they live, their home situation. Like the difference between them really working for it and over here saying, hey, I can do it. I'm just showing up. It's crazy. And so taking this like, I can do this. What do you need me to tell you? So that way you'll just give it to me. It's not enough. It's never enough. If you're young, if you're starting in a new career, if you're just out of school, when I graduated from college, I was like, here I am world. I am ready for you to give me opportunities. And then I was like, oh, the world doesn't care that I'm here. It's not enough just to show up. Number two, you've got to show people that you really want it. We had over 60 respondents um, for this posting within the first 10 hours. And they were from across Canada and the families who came out on top during our interviewing process. So, so we actually did the interviewing process. We posted it. We looked at everything. We then asked people some follow-up questions and then we actually set up interviewing. So they all live, everyone we interviewed lives between five and 30 hour drive away, 30 hours. They're willing to drive across the country for our dog. That gives my wife, Jack and I like, a little bit of comfort in knowing how bad people want this and how bad they're willing to work for the opportunity. And so when you're interviewing for the role or the bank loan or whatever it is, when you're trying to pitch the business or get the sale or bring on a partner, show people how badly you want it. Don't play guarded. Don't be close to the chest. Put yourself out there because above all else, people are buying into you. They're not buying the facts. They're not buying the figures. They're not buying the training or your background. They're buying into how you make them feel. And, and people want to work with people who are excited, who are confident, who want it. Like they want to work with people who want it. So make them feel like you want it. Have a hunger for it and be smart about it. Like be, make yourself a smart, low risk choice for them and you will start to come out on top more often. Number three, you have to have the courage not to settle.
And so this is on the other side now. This is on the entrepreneur side, on the employer side. Like too many times we get in trouble because we're worried that we won't find the right person, the right people. And so we settle or we rush into selecting someone who's just kind of okay. You have to have the courage to have standards, be upfront with people about what your standards are, and then not settle, not give in, actually live up to those standards. Don't worry if the current options are just okay. You know, don't rush the process because you likely won't find the right person right away. And that is, of course, one caveat, unless you have an awesome marketing campaign behind it. I think I did an awesome job with my post. 60 people in the first 10 hours. Yeah, but most likely, if you really have high standards, you're not gonna find the, the, the right person right away. So just have the courage to wait for the right person to post, to repost, to try different things. Because there's no shortage of right people out there if you're working really hard to find them, to engage them, and to bring them in. So I guess all in all, the takeaway is to not take things for granted, to not be lazy, to not assume that you just saying, hey man, here I am, is enough. If you're the one selling the opportunity, work your ass off. If you're the one hoping to win the opportunity, Work your off because it's striking. It's crazy how much that hard work, that hunger, that drive sets you apart from everyone else who's not willing to do the work themselves. I hope this video helped you out. If you want more tips, I really think that you got to check this video out right now. I loved shooting it and I will see you over there.